Hello and welcome. We have our sign up now. Let's work on our login a bit as well as passing that JSON web token as a cookie. So we're going to do those two things now. The first thing we'll do is jump into our auth routes and we're going to do one more uh, router dot route here. So router dot route and this will just be a login instead of sign up. Then after there, we're still going to do the same post and we're going to put it in the auth controller that'll handle all of our auth functions and we'll call it login in the auth controller. We could save this up now. Nothing should work. We haven't made this function yet. So that's just fine. We'll move over to our auth controller and we'll make login. Now here in our auth controller, let's just head down to the bottom and I'm going to get rid of the console logs. So there's four of them in here. That's quite a few. Okay, let's write from scratch to get a little practice in. Let's exports.login. And this will be an async function. So async, request and response. And then we'll fat arrow into our actual function. And here's how login will work. We want to have a const that brings the email and the password out of the body. So email password and then equal up to request dot body. So we're using that email and password in our try catch. So let's make that right now. Try catch ERR const user is going to await user dot find one and we'll pass it the email and then dot select now we'll open up some parentheses give it a string we're going to add password. There is a field that we want in our output. All right, so let's move on from there. We want to compare the passwords. So let's await bcrypt. And this is a different function that bcrypt does. It's called compare. So we'll bcrypt compare. We'll pass it the password and the user dot password. So the password is what we just brought in at the beginning in the request.body. And then we have the user dot password, which is the hashed password that we found in the database. So user dot password. And we're talking about this const user dot password there. Great. Now we just have to do our send token. So let's uh, send our token and we'll just pass it the user. And let's pass it 200 as well as the request and response. There we go. Now in our error, we're just going to cache the error. Console log the error. And then we will res.status. And that'll be 400. And dot JSON, we'll give them the error. Let's give him the error message, err dot message. Perfect. Hey, this is me after I finished this video, I was doing some testing, making sure everything was working properly. And I'm having trouble with this await bcrypt compare. It does not throw in error. It actually just returns true or false. So the way we're doing it right here doesn't do anything. We can literally log in with any password. Uh, into any account that has an email attached to it right now, because this will come back await and it'll say true or false. And then we'll just send the token, whether it's true or false. That's not what we want to do. Uh, so we're just going to do a quick ternary here. So let's get rid of all of this down here. We'll just keep it there so we can compare it. And here's what we're going to do. So const compared. Compared is going to hold the value of await bcrypt compare. So that's what we did before we had this now the value is going to be true or false. So since it's true or false, we throw a ternary in here saying if it's true, uh, give this to the send token, the user 200 request response. If it's not true, if it's false, uh, give the res.status 400 and a JSON message of login failed. This will be updated for all the future uh, starter lessons, so you don't have to know this going forward, but I didn't want you anyone to put this in their app and have a a major problem in their app. So I wanted to make sure it was in the right spot. Let's head back to the regular video. I'll see you there. Now we have this set up back here and we have it going into 
the auth routes. So it should be in our server already because we're importing auth routes back here. Here we are, perfect. Yeah, we're in good shape there. Now let's finish up doing our login on the front end and actually be able to log in and get some information back from the database. And then we'll go into the JSON web token and storing it as a cookie. So let's head over to the front end now into SRFC, into auth page, into auth.js. And if you're having any trouble finding this, remember it is in your client folder in your front end. So here we are in the auth page and now we have something called sign up user, but we wanna be able to log in a user as well. This, this form that we have not only signs you up, it logs you in. So we need to make a login user API call. So just grab all of this. This is going to look almost exactly the same. So here, login user. And we'll have a cons config, we have the headers, application JSON, and the body will still be an email and a password. That's perfect, and now our response is going to await in a post to login. It'll pass in the body and the config. We will console log the result, and we cache the error, console log the error and the error message. All right, so there we are. We have both of those, but we wanna call them separately. So on submit right now, we are automatically signing up users. We should just check one thing here on the top. It says register, and if register is true, we wanna sign up a user, but if register is not true, we want to log in a user. So let's just say that real quick. We'll say if register, and then after that, just say else login user email password. So it's really that simple to change the form and we should actually be at the point where we can log in and get information back from the server and the database. Uh, what we need to do first is grab your terminal, split them. In our two terminals, we are going to get all of our dependencies for our server and our front end. So we're just going to write yarn in our server here and then cd to client and write yarn there. That'll take a moment and then we'll head back to the front end. All right, everything's installed. So on the server side here, yarn run dev to run our dev script. And here we are, and it says login right now, so we should hit our login function. And just to make sure of all of this, I'm going to the auth controller to login, and I'm just going to console.log, login, just so we know we hit login and not sign up. So I'm going to log in as user two, and my password was password. Data coming back, that's perfect. We have 200 for the status, but let's take a look at the data because that's what we passed and we passed success, the token and the user. So we have the user being an ID and an email. That's what we want back as the user. All right, that's great. Our login is all set up except for passing that JSON web token as a cookie. And we're going to be able to pass that token as a cookie in both the sign up and the login once we're done with this, because we're only passing that cookie in one function outside of those functions themselves. If we take a quick look at them, we see uh, that here in sign up, when we wanna pass that token, we go to send token, it comes up here to our send token, which works with our send token and our sign JWT. So if you just go into your auth controller, uh, that is in your controller's auth controller, and you take a look at one thing that's bothering me right now, if you were with me when we made these process.env variables in our .env folder, you're going to see that we have a JWT expires. And I made that be an amount of days. I think I did uh, 14 days or something like that. Now that's a number with a letter after it, which really can't be handled by this date.now plus something. So this is improper here. So I just want to change that real quick. And what we're going to do is const, how about JWT expiration number. So expiration num, we'll call it that. And that will be a process dot 
env.jwt, uh, capital, jwt expiration known. We haven't made this yet, but let's put it in right here and then we'll make it. So JWT expiration num is no longer going to have a D or anything after it. I'm going to go into my dot env and see what we have here, this 14 D, that was the problem. So I'm going to take this name right here. I wanna make sure I get it right. And all it's going to say here is 14, but then we have to make this into days. So there are a thousand milliseconds in a second. There are 60 seconds in a minute. There are 60 minutes in an hour. There are 24 hours in a day. And I want it to last for 14 days. So there's our expiration number. So we have that set up and ready to go. And now that function should work here. I want to set up a development mode so we don't have too much trouble with secure and HTTP only. So we'll go back in here and we'll set up a dev mode as well. And that'll be real simple. Just type in node underscore env. That's your node environment. And that is going to equal uh, development for right now. Let's call it dev. Uh, and we'll have basically dev and production. Right now we're in dev, and I don't like having all these spaces, so I'm going to get rid of them. You don't have to, but I did. Okay, so we are in dev mode, we're in development, we're not in production. We're going to turn off some of the safety features and so on so that we can develop more easily and that we can do some cores work with the cross origin control. Uh, there's a lot uh, there's a lot of issues with cores when you're running on port 3000 and port 5000 and things are going back and forth and we're about to fix that now. So head back over to your auth controller and now just at the top we're going to import one more thing just const node underscore env is going to equal process.env.node.env. Let's do ternaries here. This would be the easiest way to do it. So we'll say node env triple equal to production question mark. And then we're just turning this backwards. So what we're saying here is if node.env is equal to production, secure should be, oh, I have this backwards, secure should be true. Otherwise, if it's not in production, if it's in development, it should be false. We're going to write the same thing here, another ternary, saying the same exact thing. Node n triple equal to production. And then a question mark. So is it equal to production? If it is true, otherwise false. And just now with this whole chunk of code that wound up being here, I'd like to take this out. I'd no longer want it to be inside of this res.cookie anymore. We're just going to get rid of it. Uh, make sure you copy it and then delete it or undo. So this will be const options and that's going to equal all of those options. So just after token, pop in options. I know it looks like we did nothing there, but it does clean up my code a little bit and I really prefer the code to look clean when we throw this cookie back with a JWT and the JWT's value being the token and all the options for that token. Good, that's looking good now. Now there's a couple more things we have to do to get this into the cookies themselves. So let's work on that. I think the best way to handle this would be to do the front end and then the back end so we could kind of look at what's happening here. So let's go to the front end and take a look into your utils, into your API. This is where we define Axios to have the local host 5000. Now we're doing some credentials now. So we have to actually add something called with credentials and make that true. And there's one more thing, just credentials. And what you want that to be is include. Great, so our calls will include credentials and we'll be able to receive credentials from this server. Now, I just want to set credentials on the server as well. So head to your server.js 
And where we have cores, we're going to be way more specific. So app.use cores is just fine, and we want this origin to change. Then after that, we want to set one more thing called credentials, and we want to set that to true. We have to set the origin now to be something specific rather than all the origins like we have it on right now. And the origin that React is coming from is HTTP. And then we're going to localhost and 3000. Perfect. Our front end app is on 3000 on React and our back end is on 5000. So we're saying accept calls from localhost 3000 and you're allowed to pass credentials to localhost 3000. So now we did log in and we could take a look. It says we have cookies, there's two in use and we have localhost, but in here we have no cookies. Okay, so we're finally going to pass the cookie in and it should work on login. Let's give it a go with my user two. All right, so we are logged in. We could see our JWT cookie with the content of the BW and so on. And we could see a data with a token coming back. And we could see the BW right over here after the beginning of it ending in SA. We are getting the token back as a cookie and we are going to be able to use this cookie to authenticate, to protect different routes to let people do things to their account and not to other accounts, to let people create, to delete, to let an admin service handle all your users. This will all happen looking at this cookie here to check which type of user you are and to protect routes behind it. So we did our authentication with our login and we did our sign up. We still have to do our log out and we will get to that next. And we're also going to delete this JWT token when we do the logout. We're technically not going to delete it, but we have a really cool workaround. So great job on this one and follow me to the next one.